When it comes to spear guns and pole spears, everybody has their preference. For example, I'm a huge fan of the Bellin 110. It's a traditional wood gun. It's simple, accurate, and powerful. Now, I've owned rollers and inverted rollers, great guns as well. The secret to being accurate is picking a gun and sticking to it. If you're switching the different types of guns, it's going to be hard to make sure that you have that consistent shot. Now, Brett has built his own guns, and he's used a bunch as well. So with his 20 years experience of spearfishing, he's going to cover the essential spear guns and pole spears you need to consider before ever going into a dive shop. So Brett, take it away. So the next thing we're going to talk about is like a traditional rail gun or a pipe gun. They are very similar to this one, even though this one's really old. It's an aluminum tube, goes into a handle, and uh, they're traditionally powered with one or two bands. They use a little bit lighter shaft for the most part, even though this one's pretty big, but they typically use a 7.5 or less shaft, which is, I think, a 930 seconds, maybe? Anyways, going back and forth from Imperial to metric is not a lot of fun sometimes. So... But these guys, right, has a safety on it. Uh, I typically don't use safeties. They're not a bad thing. But this one has a safety on it and the line release right here so that when you pull the trigger, this thing flies forward and the line comes off. This little piece we haven't talked about, this is a little bungee that's used to create tension so that that line stays on the line release until fired, okay? Um, so this is a little bungee. It's kind of a nice thing. Usually you connect it into a reel. This the way this thing is set up is mainly for small reef fish and doesn't have a reel or a float line yet. But that's this gun. You can see the muzzle right here. This is called a closed muzzle where it has to pass to this little path here. Okay. So that's called a closed muzzle. These typically are a little less, uh, uh expensive. They're common in places like South Africa, Australia, even in Europe, uh, the Mediterranean. Bob Allen makes some great, great guns, rail guns, um, like pretty amazing. The only thing that we don't hear in Southern California is they're pretty noisy. They do tend to be a little noisy. You can tell as I reel around, there's like, everything is like making noise. We try to be quiet, especially for hunting white sea bass. Um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, this gun is my gun I made for my son. It's a little reef gun. It's 44 inches long. I actually just put a third band on just in case I was diving somewhere where the visibility was terrible. And so I use this gun because it's shorter and I don't have to worry about whipping this thing around in three feet of vis. Uh, anyways, so this particular gun would be like a, an example of a reef gun where... They would have one or two bands, even though I added a third. Usually there's just one or two bands. And um, shoots a seven millimeter shaft, just a flopper shaft, nothing crazy. And the thing itself is rigged with Dyneema. I get into all of that later on too. Dyneema, I use Dyneema for a specific reason. Why I put that on there, especially if you're hunting on reef where there's sharp edges everywhere. Although monofilament would work fine for something like this. Nothing special really about this gun. It's equipped with a reel because the hunting and reefs and all that stuff, I just use a reel. It's really shallow where I was hunting at, even though the vis was bad. But you could see, so this gun right here, 44 inches. If this was a European version of this gun where they would call it a Euro gun, it might be some of the times you guys have seen guns not based on their size and... Um, imperial but based on their size metric and you'll see like oh it's 90 centimeters and you're looking at the gun and it's much longer than 90, 90 centimeters the way the europeans do their guns when you say euro is they measure from the band slots to right about here right distance from right here to the neck so what you're going to get is say that's 90 centimeters this guy even though it's 44 inches long it's a 90 centimeter gun, right? So this gun in would be 100 centimeters, as I measured it before, would be 100 centimeters. So I would typically use this gun for a reef uh, and really working cave, uh, looking in caves and things like that, 
right? It's rear handle. It's called a rear handle because the handle's in the rear. Again, clip that onto a float line if you need to. Line release is here, and that's about it, okay? All right, the next gun I'm gonna say we use for, there's reef, but also light blue water hunting. And in blue water hunting, we say blue water, meaning clear water. You have a lot of visibility usually, right? So you're gonna be taking longer shots. And that's the reason why you get these longer guns because you need to be able to get the shaft accelerating over a greater distance in time. We talked about this before with the band stretch. If the shaft should be accelerating from here all the way to here, that's kind of the concept of why people swear by roller guns. And we get into the roller guns in a second. But for this gun, it's a little longer. There's three bands. So it's a little more powerful than, say, a one or two band reef gun. Um, so it's long, and I would use this gun for, say, medium size, even bigger size fish um, with a nice, well placed shot. Uh, but this gun is an open track, meaning the shaft doesn't slide into it where it's enclosed, keeping it in there. Um, but it's rear handle also. So the thing with the rear handle is you can extend out the gun really, really far. It's less maneuverable, though, when you have a long gun out that far. So this gun, it was making this gun, I was trying to actually make a smaller version, a thinner version, uh, to like a Euro-style gun where you have two bands, really long and thin and narrow gun for precise shooting at greater distance with a much smaller shaft. However, being an American, I guess, and being from California, we just can't get away from our gigantic timber guns. So anyways, that kind of became that. So and that's the deal with this guy. But I use this for uh, blue water, light blue water. Anything really over 55 inches, you know, I maybe even 50, but 55 inches or greater, you can use for light blue water. Um, and two to three bands, I would say. All right. So here's another example of a light blue water gun for you. Only it's a little unique because it's what they call a hybrid gun, meaning it's got a carbon fiber shaft going into a wooden stock. This is a, a, a from my friend Paul Rodriguez from Hot Rod Spear Guns, and it's rear handle. But this gun is perfect light blue water gun. But it actually, the unique thing about this gun is if you unscrew this screw, this comes out and it breaks down and do smaller than a set of fins. So that's why I love this gun. It's quiet and it's really, really accurate. It travels well and you can shoot true like blue water fish with it. So this would be a called a um, hybrid. Daryl Wong makes uh, pretty good hybrids as well. That's his thing. This gun's pretty awesome. So. All right. So if we get into the big tuna scene, we go from, we covered reef or smaller guns, one and two bands, right? Anything 50 inches or less, right? Reef. We got it in medium size, blue water, what you would need most of the time. You know, I would say three bands, 65 inches and less really is all you need. Now we're getting into tuna. So it's not just about the length, it's also about the power. And when we get into big, you know, true blue water guns, we're talking about these giant guns that everybody shoots, they're really, really powerful. You might use them specifically for that fish and that is it, okay? So let's get into this. Okay, this gun is 60 inches long, all right? It's wrapped in carbon fiber. Why? Because I thought it looked cool. Okay, that's really it. Um, and I thought it would add some strength to it. But this is what they call is a double roller. Why? Because there's these rollers. It's a roller gun. The reason why roller guns are so unique is because they use the entire length of the muzzle and the shaft. They use the entire stock of this gun. Okay, they pull from here all the way to here. 
And the reason why is, let me show you how roller guns work. So you're gonna attach the thing here, okay? And attach it all the way back to those fin strap, to those uh, tabs, okay? All the way back to these tabs. So there's a lot of rubber and there's a lot of stretch, all right? But let me show you how this works. So you can see right now, these two bands have tension right here and they stop right here. If it's loaded here, if it's loaded all the way back to the end here, okay, I don't know if you can see that, if it's loaded all the way back to here, okay, you're gonna have full stretch of it going all the way back to the shark fin tabs, they call it on a shaft. So when this thing is fired, it pulls from here all the way up to there and it just stops. So you're getting almost a full like 58 inches. It's a 60 inch gun, but you could get damn near the whole tire length of the gun as far as the shaft accelerating, okay? This thing right here is like, what is this thing then? This is me adding on another, another band. It's called a kicker band and it's basically adds torque. It helps get the shaft moving while these other two bands are pulling it. Essentially to break it down is you have guns with three bands, four bands, five bands. All those bands are applying that force, the force over the shorter amount of time. Now you have two bands applying the force over a longer amount of time, but it's still two bands pulling. So what you want to do with a thicker 3 8 11 16 shaft or whatever it is, or a 3 8 and a 9 millimeter, you're going to want to get that mass moving faster. So then you add a kicker band. That's how that works, okay? But... So what happens is with these roller guns is you get more acceleration over amount of time and you get increased range. The cool thing about a roller gun is there is literally no kick because you have even pull on the top and on the bottom of the gun, right? I have used this gun to shoot tuna, dog tooth tuna, bluefin tuna, and it works really great. It's like a laser. However, it wasn't always like that. And I kind of want to get into that a little bit because it wasn't always like that because when I first got it, when I first made it, I guess I should say, these things are called bridles, right? These bridles here, this is what called a bridle. They rest on these bars right here, okay? Well, the bar was actually straight, almost like a little ramp, more like a ramp, like a triangle than it is now. And so as the shaft was exiting the, 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 the gun, they would hit this, they would hit that part and go up and follow the contour as it exited went up. So what was happening is as it was coming out, it was kicking up the ass end of the gun, forcing it to shoot extremely low. And I realized that once I did enough reading and realized what was going on. So the quick fix was where I was on an island is I just took a mallet and I smashed these down. And that's all it took. And it was like a laser at 25, 30 feet. So this gun, heavy blue water, you can actually use it for medium blue water. You can power with one band or two. I like the variation. It really just depends on what you want to use it for. But I use it for blue water. It just, yeah, very, very gun, okay? It also can be kind of a pain to load, though, to be honest with you. There's a lot of working parts. All right, we are going to go over, and it's a specific gun. And the reason why I want to share it with you is just like hunting on land, there are so many different variations of weapons for different fish or, or different species you're hunting. Well, this gun was built 20 years ago. First gun I ever built. Didn't have any tools in the garage, and um, it shoots like a laser but it just kind of reinforces all the concepts that we've been talking about as far as uh, guns themselves. Okay, look, this two by four, like I said, it's 20 something years old. This thing is huge. The reason why it's so huge, okay, and so ugly looking <laughs> is that, first of all, it's made out of teak, just like most guns, either teak or mahogany, but it's heavy. And the reason why it's so heavy, because it shoots a 3-8 shaft. 
like this. It's basically a piece of rebar, okay? So when you're displacing that much weight forward, that much force is coming back. So you want, especially if it's not a roller, right? I just talked about that as far as kick goes. The kick on this gun, you don't want it to kick so much where it kicks up and the shaft drops, it's inaccurate, right? That's the beauty of a roller gun that I just talked about where there's no kick really, it's just even pressure, so it just fires straight. This gun, if you shoot, it's so powerful. I've had six bands on it before, there's five now. If you shoot a 3.8 shaft, it's gonna kick. But because it's so heavy and so thick, rather than kick up, it just kicks back very minimal and it creates a really accurate shot. I dove with this gun for years and killed a lot of fish and some completely overkill of fish that I've shot with this thing like Barracuda. And it hit it because it's so big, it floats in the water, it's neutral in the water, it's neutral or buoyant, it just stays like this, and it's a mid-handle. What is a mid-handle? It's a handle that's either like usually around 12 inches forward of the butt, so it's kind of like a rifle. It makes it really easy to swing it around. This gun specifically was developed for white sea bass years ago, and... It was developed for white sea bass where the visibility is murky usually. And sometimes white sea bass get up to, you know, 80 pounds. And I shot one and with a free band gun and it barely went in. This was years ago. It was kind of like that, that uh, gun that I showed you earlier. And I went and told my friend and he was like, come over, I'm going to help you. So he helped me make this. And he says, that's not going to happen with this gun. And so clearly it hasn't happened as far as not having penetration on anything. When you're firing, I've fired it like this before. I've fired it where, like most men handles, you get your arm locked out straight, you press, and you fire, okay? You keep your face away from the end because you will get hit in the jaw with it or in the mouth, which has happened with this gun because of the power, okay? So this specifically is for white sea bass. However, I've taken it offshore and shot tuna with it too before. So uh, the biggest thing with guns is that there are specific, specific tools for specific jobs and you rig them up appropriately. But this is basically an introduction into these guns. We get into rigging and all that stuff later on. There's different kinds of pole spares. There's carbon fiber, there's fiberglass, there's aluminum. They range anywhere from like six feet up to like 12 feet mainly for smaller to medium-sized fish, but they're actually really exciting to learn when you know how to use them well. It's a pretty effective tool. Usually what you'll see with a pole spear is a paralyzing tip, which consists of three flaring out little, uh, little pieces of metal. And um, the idea is you hit a fish and you got three chances to stone the thing or to uh, break its back or paralyze it. That's why it's called a paralyzing tip. These guys are powered by a band like so. Just one band back there. Now I recommend if you're gonna use it, as you pull these forward, you twist so that the tension, this twist like one time is even on the pole spare and it doesn't cause it to warp or bend. Another thing I'll say about using a pole spare is wear gloves. Um, and the reason being is because with carbon fiber or fiberglass, if that thing, were to splint, split off, or, or whatever, you get a splinter, anything like that, and that gets in your hand, that's going to hurt real bad. Especially little spots like this right here. There's probably a little bit of fiberglass in there, and you get that in your hand, and it's not going to be fun. So wear gloves when you use these guys. Well, I hope you found that information helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments, and I'll get back to you. Now, if you're interested, the next video in the series is right here.